Hello everyone and welcome to my Days of Our Lives 24 channel. I hope everyone is having a wonderful day. Before we begin, please hit the subscribe button and give this video a thumbs up. Xander orders Sloane to go for the throat in his care case, while Sarah reels after learning Susan is alive. At the manor, Kate is excited to discover that Sarah asked Rex for a separation. An irate Rex tells his mom he doesn't need that and doesn't have any desire to betray his girl. You mean Xander's girl, Kate says. No, he fires back, I mean my girl. She realizes Xander won't move to one side and let him bring up his kid. Additionally, Sarah actually has it awful for Xander, and he merits somebody who isn't hot for the nursery worker. She asks him let her go. Sarah is shocked to see Susan in the square. EJ gets them together with bear hooks for his mom. He assists Sarah with sitting as she reels over being irate with Xander for Susan's passing. Presently you're not irate any longer, right? Susan inquires. According to EJ, obviously, she's as yet irate. Xander actually seized Susan, which prompted her horrible and extended period of her life. At the point when Susan asks Sarah's thought process, she says Xander's not a killer. Not this time, EJ snarks. Sarah leaves in a shock. Xander comes to Sloane's place to meet with his legal counselor. Disappointed, Eric asks what the Scott did this time. Xander broadcasts he's the harmed party. Eric says Sloane ought to have told him. A remorseful Sloane knows. After Eric leaves for espresso, Sloane asks Xander for what good reason he figures she can win him care of his little girl. Xander brings up Susan's alive, so he's not a killer. Sloane reminds him he actually seized her. Moreover, it'll be hard to take an infant from her mom. Xander calls attention to Sarah kept his youngster from him. Very much as she did to Eric. Who might keep a parent from their own kid? A beast. That is who, Xander says, responding to his own inquiry unironically. A blameworthy-looking Sloane requests more subtleties. Similar to who did Sarah say was the child's dad? Indeed, that is not significant, Xander says. All that is significant is that Sarah has a background marked by misleading get men far from their own youngsters. Sloane doesn't know that makes her an ill-suited mother, yet it gives them a play in court. He really wants her to go for the throat. Sloane notes he truly can't stand Sarah's guts. Indeed, he glowers. Indeed, I do. From the bar, Harris calls Ava, who is remaining at Tripp's place. In the wait of getting up to speed with their separate living game plans, Harris notes he really wants to get a new line of work to pay for lease. At the point when he wails over the unfortunate work possibilities for a cleaned-up seal whose last occupation was hired soldier-slash-contract killer, she calls him a legend. A concerned trip approaches, hearing. Ava hangs up and offers to make her child and Wendy breakfast. He expresses Wendy's at a prospective employee meeting, which he's certain she'll get in light of the fact that she's really shrewd and proficient. Ava asks how serious things are. Trip concedes he's infatuated with her, then gets some information about Ava's affections for Harris. They're simply companions, she demands. At the point when Sarah gets back to the chateau, Kate gets in digs before Rex requests that she leave. Whenever she's gone, Sarah tells Rex she saw a not-dead Susan. He asks what her response was. Supporting, Sarah notes it gives Xander and any grounds to be taken seriously in court, yet it doesn't alter her perspective on the separation. Kate's right. It's the ideal opportunity for every one of them to continue on. He advises her to send the legal documents to him in Chicago. He simply trusts she will not be taken in by Xander once more. They say a sad farewell. In the square, Susan and EJ banter his requirement for retaliation against Xander and Susan. She requests he swear on her life that he won't hurt a solitary hair on their heads. I wouldn't dream of it, he says, overdoing it maybe a little. She trusts he's coming clean since she won't be there to watch out for him. She's returning home to Memphis. At the point when Eric comes to the bar, he tracks down Harris at the bar. They get comfortable as Kate goes along with them. As the triplet examines Dimitri's capture and Vivian leaving town, Kate tosses conceal at police official, Raff. She then, at that point, recommends Harris go after a position at the police headquarters. Before he leaves, Eric offers to take care of Harris in the event that he wants anything. That's what Harris values, and afterward faces Kate, 
who offers to start the ball rolling in a good direction with Jada, the main able cop on the power. He'll consider it. At Sloane's place, the legal counselor tells Dander his guardianship suit will be a daunting struggle. She inquires as to whether he'd consider co-nurturing. After what Sarah did, Sander denies. Taking everything into account, a lady like that doesn't merit another opportunity. He passes on Sloane to expand in disgrace. Sander bursts into the Kyriakis house, requesting to see his little girl. Sarah requests that he let Rex express farewell before he returns to Chicago. She educates him regarding the separation and that she saw Susan. She never thought he was a horrendous individual, she was simply frightened to let him back into her life. However, presently, he is right here. As Trip takes off, he makes the way for Harris. Trip says thanks to him for saving their lives, yet cautions that Ava doesn't have to manage any other person's stuff. Ava shoes her child out. She is sorry for Trip, yet her child realizes how fixated she can move past a person. Harris has insight with fixation, reviewing his experience with trust. They lock eyes as Ava says the two of them understand what it's preferred to take to drastic courses of action for what they need. Grasping her hand, Harris inclines in to kiss her. As Marlena and Kate get up to speed at the bar, Rex barrels through with his bag. Kate's unnerved to learn Rex is leaving Salem, particularly after Philip recently left. He tells his mom he cherishes her, yet he and Sarah are getting a separation, and that is precisely exact thing she needed. Eric presents to Sloane a conciliatory sentiment scone for Pryor. Xander simply provokes him. Sloane gets it and uncovers she figured out how Sarah kept him from his kid. Eric comprehends the reason why Sarah did what she did, however the agony of what happened was because of a falsehood. It's difficult to fail to remember the aggravation she caused not exclusively to him, however every other person. Sloane's caring articulation becomes upset as they embrace. In the square, EJ gets aggravated up pondering who might carry Susan to scrap, consequently putting her through some serious hardship. Somewhere else, an unidentified man, who wears a blue denim shirt, holds a tablet. He peruses an article about Ava bringing Susan home alive. In a dramatic courtroom showdown, Xander, the relentless attorney, ordered Sloane to unleash an aggressive legal assault, going for the jugular in their high-stakes custody case. Xander's ruthless tactics left no room for compromise, setting the stage for a fierce battle that would determine the fate of their child. Meanwhile, in a shocking revelation, Sarah discovered that Susan, who she had long believed to be deceased, was in fact alive. The revelation sent shockwaves through her life, leaving her reeling with a mix of emotions and a barrage of questions about Susan's mysterious disappearance and reappearance. The twists and turns in their intertwined lives promised a tumultuous path ahead. Thanks for watching if you like this video, so please don't forget to subscribe my channel and don't miss any updates.